Black. Three, two, one. Go. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Stand by leader, six, stand by scene. Q leader, Q sting. Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of WCTV. I'm Blake Erickson, and to my right is Gina Ambrose. As most of you already know, next week is Winterfest week. We thought we would start off by reminding you of the dress-up days. As usual, Monday is pajama day and Tuesday is pee day. You can pick if you want to be a princess, a prep, or a punk. Wednesday is hat day and Thursday it's time to think of summer with fun in the Sunday. Then Friday, pull out all your purple and gold to help support the Lynx. Our school is great at, support, at supporting those who take part in the extracurricular activities. We also receive a lot of support from teachers, parents, people in the community, and even beyond. That's right. One of those people is Dr. Larry Baker, the author of The Flamingo Rising. He took some time out of his busy schedule to help talk to some of the kids at the WCHS. To tell us more, here's John. Students of Mrs. Hansen's College Prep 2 class flowed into Premsa High Auditorium January 18th and got the chance to ask questions to the author of a popular book they had been assigned to read. Larry Baker, the author of The Flamingo Rising, was Mrs. Hansen's history professor at the University of Iowa. She asked Mr. Baker to come answer any questions the kids might have had from the book. I had a few questions of my own, so I caught up with him and here's what he had to say. Dr. Baker, how long ago did you start writing The Flamingo Rising? Well, I started writing about 15 years ago and wrote a chapter or two and tried to tell it from the point of view of the father, didn't work, put it down for six or seven years, came back and figured out that I needed to have the son telling the story instead of the father. And as soon as I did that, I wrote the book 400 pages in 10 months and got it published in 1997. How well did it do after it was published? Did very well the first few months. Um, came out in paperback and had another bump. Um, and then after the movie, it, uh, a little bit more interest after the movie as well. It never became a national bestseller. It was on top 10 and number one lists in the South a lot, but never nationally. Speaking of the movie, what are your views on it? I try not to think about the movie. Um, they got the title right, and they got most of the characters in there, but they missed 90% of the story. After answering questions for a couple hours, students had the chance to go up and ask Dr. Baker questions personally. But soon it was time for Dr. Baker to leave, and we say goodbye to him till next year. This is John Hess reporting for WCTV. Thanks, John. Seems like there have been a lot of out-of-town visitors to our school lately. Why? Who else has been here? Well, Senator Grassley came here to talk to some of the seniors a few weeks ago, and then there was the white sidewalls. The white sidewalls? Yeah, they were here a couple weeks ago to raise money for the, to help the band department. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. I think Joe can catch us up on what happened. Joe? Balls, a type of tire, an architectural term, or a 50s and 60s rock group playing in Western City for a benefit dance. The sidewalls came to Joe on January 13th to make Jeff, Jim, Jump and Thump with rock and roll music. The dance lasted from 4 to 6 but was kicked off by the Webster City Jazz Band at 3. The dance was a great time to listen to some old time music. Why were the si white sidewalls here? It turns out each year, the white sidewalls come to Webster City for a benefit concert and dance, during which the Webster City band boosters sell concessions. All these profits go towards the Webster City Instrument Fund so the band can buy new instruments. Now that you know why the white sidewalls were performing in Jeff Jim, what did you think of the dance? I like to dance a lot. You know, I liked it better. I liked it a lot. Um, it's really funny watching the old people dance. They're like, think they're cool, but they're not. Um, they all dance the same. They're all like out there going like this and stuff, and it's really funny. <laughs> well, I had to work most of the dance thing, so I didn't really get to enjoy it that much. But from my, what I heard from here at the concession stand, it sounded okay. 
The concert's over, and everybody had a great time. Thanks to the White Sidewells for coming to Webster City. This is Joe Bussin reporting for WCTV, and I'll catch up with you later in the studio. Thanks, Joe. That's all for this week's show. We leave you with some clips from a birthday that got a little out of hand. Mr. Hunt celebrated his birthday last week, and rumor has it that we, he turned 40, but we would like to clarify the fact that he's only 37. So have a good weekend, and we'll see you on Monday in your pajamas. This is not <laughs> You guys are really funny. <laughs> you wouldn't have had anything to do with this by chance, would you? <laughs> yeah. I have nothing. <laughs> Woo! You must make up everything. <laughs>